Welcome everyone. I've got a special video for you today. We reviewed the CuraSim Controls Truck Simulator Control Panel, and I'd like to tell you about it. The device itself is well built, ships quickly, built in the United States. CuraSim is trying to get their name out there. Um, I purchased this at a reduced cost to review for you guys, and I hope you enjoy what I have to offer here. You're going to see a couple of different portions of this, all of which include talking about the bu button box, how to set it up. I'm going to show how to set it up on American Truck Simulator. Additionally, I'm going to give my thoughts about the piece, and you're going to see the piece, a 360-degree view of it, front, back, sides. I'm curious to think if you have one already, and if you don't, is this going to sway you from one or the other? Let's get to it and see what the CuraSim Controls Truck Simulator Control Box is all about. The CuraSim Controls Truck Simulator Control Panel contains a bunch of different items that will be useful to use in things like American Truck Simulator, Alaskan Truck Simulator, which we just tested a few days ago, as well as things like Farm Sim and other racing games like Assetto Corsa Competizione or iRacing or RF2, etc., etc. It includes a myriad of buttons, such as five double pull switches, which are actually like 10 different buttons used for up and down items like windows or suspension. There's four dials used for increasing or decreasing, for example, the engine brake or cruise control. There are seven lit momentary buttons for single function items, four toggles, two plane throws, and two marked with trailer air and parking brake, two plane momentary buttons for single function items, there are four different faces available for the front of the device, like wood grain or carbon fiber, etc. It comes with C-clamp style desk mounts, as well as a VESA mount on the back for SIM rig mounting. I spoke to the owner briefly about a couple of suggestions that I would make to the device itself. One of them happened to be that make the C-clamp connection, which currently exists on the bottom of the device, to also make one on top. While you could do this, from what I understood, it's easy enough to undo the screws, which you'll notice on the front face, and flip the face around as he's notched a hole for the USB cable in the other side. So you could hang the device upside down using the C-clamps from the top of the desk. This may work for some people which have a higher desk or a different type of mounting location where it would look better hanging from the device instead of having to reach up. The other issue that I did have was with the faceplate itself. It looks like during the manufacturing process, the faceplate has some kind of like rough abrasions to it, which does not occur on other faceplates like the carbon fiber and the wood burl he was telling me about. But the one that I picked does have that. It's not necessarily a game breaker for me, uh, but it may bother some people, so I thought of that. I would suggest it. You want to go with something that has a little bit more sheen on it instead of the dull fronted ones. So the wood burl or the carbon fiber are usually a better bet. Every game that I tried this button box in, from American Truck Simulator, Alaskan Truck Simulator, Assetto Corsa Competizione, all received the information from the button box without any additional functionality from me. Once you plug it in via USB, the controller inside, it treats it like another joystick. So all you have to do is assign the buttons inside the game that you're working with. Uh, remember, these are all manual, so you have to assign them yourself. The game does not automatically assign any buttons for you, so you will have to assign them all. Of course, you can save that profile within that game so that you don't have to do it all over again every time unless you unplug and replug your USB multiple times or put it in a different slot. Sometimes that will 
ruin some setup things for you. But otherwise, it didn't have any issues for me. Even with multiple thunderstorm warnings in this area, I've had to power down everything and unplug everything in order to make sure that my computer has been safe and I've plugged everything back in and everything functions as it was. But you may have to reconfigure buttons sometimes occasionally depending on uh, USB functionality. The double pole switches at the top of the box which provide the up and down uh, feeling like windows or suspension, those feel great. Uh, very positive feeling when you press up and down. You can definitely tell that it's clicking. The momentary buttons, which are plain, not the LED ringed buttons, those also have a very positive function. You can peel, feel them pushing into the front plate and you know when they're being pressed. The lit buttons are a little bit small and I don't have very large hands by any means, uh, but you do have to press inside the ring to get it to go all the way in to activate. So sometimes there was an issue where it was not picking up the press if I wasn't very accurate with it, but the toggles all work great as well as the um, dials are fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed them for the engine brake modulation. So if you have multiple selections for your engine brake, like one through five or one through three, you can easily dial it back or dial it up. In addition, especially in racing games like the one I play, Assetto Corsa Competizione, there's brake balance and brake bias adjustments you can make, and you can easily use that dial to rotate yourself forward or back in the brake bias very easily without having to press a plus or minus button. It makes it so much easier to get those very, very fine adjustments that you may need. Some games don't provide the toggle functionality. So for instance, in American Truck Simulator, we have an engine brake and you'll notice in the menu, it says toggle function. If you use engine brake toggle, then you can flip the switch up and that turns the engine brake on. Other games don't, ha don't supply that same functionality. So using the toggles, you'll have to flip it up and then back down in order to flip it up again to turn it off and then back down. So that can kind of be in a little bit of annoyance when you're coming from American Truck Simulator or Euro Truck Simulator 2, but it's just something to keep in mind that those buttons are meant for a specific application. In some games, they won't work. One of my favorite buttons, which really isn't a button at all, is actually the key. The key is a momentary button which you can turn like a real key and it will activate the button inside, which will cause the truck or whatever car to start. Uh, it's a very cool function, makes it feel much more realistic when you're driving a vehicle to have the key to start it up instead of just hitting two buttons to make it go. And that really speaks to the, the mechanical nature of us when we're thinking about starting our car or starting a truck. We always think about that key and turning it over. I'm sure that someday we will, like every car and truck won't be using a key, but right now the key is still functional for me. So very cool addition there. The USB cord that comes with the device is a braided cord, very rugged, is a good length on it, about five to six feet. So definitely usable for uh, mounting in a position where you'd have to kind of stretch it a little bit to get to a USB port. So I don't think there's any issues or there shouldn't be any issues with uh, anybody getting it to where it needs to go. I do use a uh, USB hub for, uh, which is mounted directly to my GT Omega steering wheel bracket. That functions well for me and I can plug that USB directly into that hub. Everything works great from there. Some may not be as lucky and you might have to use the actual PC USB plugs on the PC and depending on where that PC is would be where it needs to reach but I think that five or six feet is usually a good enough distance and uh, so I would recommend that the USB is is about the, the right length in my opinion. As a company that's just started up and putting these together I think they've done a fantastic job with the device that they do have. Sure, there are a few improvements that could be added, which I've detailed before. The overall feeling and you know texture and finish of the device is very good. All of the, the, the whole device functions. There are no broken switches. None of them don't work. 
Um, they, you know, they all worked on arrival. Uh, there's been no issues with there. I've been in communication with the owner. He's very receptive to feedback. And so it's nice to be able to have this experience and provide this review to you guys so that you can make an informed decision about it. And like I said, there are some things that I would change and I have listed them and he knows about them. So it might be something that's changing in the future. However, this gets a solid recommend from me as something that will increase your experience inside the game. And it's not if it's not something that you like to tinker with, because you can make these button boxes on your own, get all the pieces and all the switches and things like that. But to have this done for you for the price that he's offering it for uh, is pretty competitive. And shipping speed was very quick. I think it was three total days um, from the purchase date. When you're doing stuff like this and pre-building all these and getting them out for sale, you want to be able to get them in the mailbox and get them out to your customer as quick as possible. And I feel that a small business like this, that's a reasonable time frame to wait to get your device. And like I said, no issues with the packing. Everything was as advertised, hooked it right up. Not a problem at all. Just a fantastic experience overall and I'm really enjoying it and I'm actually playing more truck simulator than I have for many months just because I don't have to have a keyboard in my lap and that is probably the number one priority for me. Uh...
don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. It really helps the channel out when you like something, especially what that does is it gives it the, the video the opportunity to be displayed to more people who are like yourself and like other things that you do. I would appreciate it. Let us know if this is something that you'd like to see in the future. More of these types of hardware review videos or even software review videos or how to use something, some sort of software or some sort of hardware. Thanks for watching and we'll see you for next time on half Fast Gaming. Thank uh -huh.